Hey guys, Stealth here. Bit of a bonus video, as we have Finland coming out soon. It's going to be Thursday, 5.30 Central European time. And I already have access, so I can give you a preview of what you can expect, so you can make up your mind whether it is worth it. As for my short review, I'd say Finland, absolutely. And we're going to look into why right now. Now, I'm going to be building a Finland general deck. Keep in mind that the stats that you're going to see are subject to change. Some of the units are not yet finalized, and therefore you don't, or you're not likely to see all of these stats one on one in the exact DLC. As for the price, I don't know what that's going to be. They haven't told me yet. Now, again, my pronunciation for Finnish units. Um, I'm doing my best, but I am not Finnish. I'm Dutch, so I'm trying to get these pronunciations right. Logistics. Let's start it with command units. You have a couple of different options. You have a uh, BTR-50 version command unit, not specifically special, just 100 points, which, well, maybe you could call that special because it is slightly more heavily armed as well as armored than a command jeep, such as the US that you can see here. Problem though is that you only get five versus seven, but for a unit such as this, where you can get at least a bit of armor and well, slightly less availability for two points, I'll take it. Other units that you can get are the BMP-1 Copa. Basically your BMP-1 with a Grom on it. Nothing special there. 125 points. XA-180 Copa. Another XA-180 variant. You're going to be seeing a lot of these. Um, it is amphibious, so that's a nice capability to have on your transports and not too many have that, of course, so you could see that as a potential advantage, but I, for one, don't do that many naval advances, so I don't see myself using this unit specifically for its naval capability. Command Infantry, which is the Comento Uoke. These guys come in several different transports, one of which is the notable XA-185KT. It comes with a Bushmaster 2 on it, and you're only paying 15 points for this transport. I personally think, after having seen this gun in action, that it should be worth 20. But let's not um, see, or let's not go into discussion on that, as I think that these stats might still be changed. Anyway, Command Infantry, you also have the BTR 50, which is the same as this one, of course. You have the MI-8P and the Super Puma. So you got quite a few different transport options. MI4 Copa, just your standard MI4 Command Helo. T55A Copa, as well as the T72A Copa are your command tanks. And that is all of your command section. So you got your APCs, you got your infantry command, and a couple of other command options. I would stay away from the helicopter, they're just impossible to hide, very slow, very weak, and very easy to kill. I usually go with one APC and or one command tank and one infantry unit. Don't be Eugen and don't go with four command vehicles, please. That's that's bad business. So, I'm going to go for one in the Super Puma, the infantry. And I'm going to go with the T-72A Copa, or the T-72 Copa. Then I'm going to need a FOB to keep everything supplied. And as for logistics options, you have the MI-8P. You have the Terra 865BM KPI and the SA-150. I prefer this one, and here's why. It is slightly more mobile, 60 versus 50. It has the same on-road speed of 150, but it carries slightly more supplies for only fifth, uh, sorry, five points more. And you get 12 of these, which should be plenty. Infantry section, and this is where we see some very, very interesting and very powerful units. The Finnish have great infantry. That is really going to be a strong suit of them. I've tried a Finnish motorized deck so far, and yes, it was up against an AI, so they're not going to be putting up any sort of um, actual resistance. I was just interested in how these units perform, and the infantry is definitely the strong suit of this deck. Now, the ITOs, you have the 78 version and the ITA, ITO 86M. I would stay away from the 78 and go directly for the 86M. You're paying four times the price tag, 
But, here's the thing. These guys can actually hit something. And when they hit something, they do 5 HE damage. This one only does 3. It's not particularly likely to hit. And sure, you may be able to spam them as you get 19 or 14 of these, but I still prefer my infantry if I use AA infantry at all, and that is in this deck not guaranteed. I prefer them to actually hit something, so that even if they don't kill it, it's at least damaged and can be killed off by something else, or it may be stunned. And I'm not going to bring any of these. We're going to get into why that is later. Um, the infantry, line infantry, is the Jakari. They come in two different variants. The variants have the same price tag. The only difference is availability as far as their numbers go and they carry a slightly different weapon. They have the M72A4 law versus the M72. The A4 has some advantages, one of which is improved AP, a bit of improved accuracy, and the range is the same. So you're not really looking at an infantry unit that is going to be doing any miracles for you, but then again, it is line infantry. As far as their transport choices go, they are pretty standard, I'd say. You have the BTR-50, BTR-60PB, which is motorized, XA-180, motorized, XA-185, KT, there's the Bushmaster again. So try not to bring your command unit in one of those, because you only get two of them, at least in the preview. Jacqueline 90 in the MI-8P, and they... Um, all share those units. They don't have any special ones for the Jakari 90. Unfortunately, because um, the Kart and Jakari have some really, really nice transports. Now, as for the line infantry, I'm going to be taking one card of XA 180s with Jakari 90 as um, a sort of holding force and or spammable infantry. Talking about the Kart and Jakari, these are fantastic and you can get a lot of them. They're a shock squad, which means that they carry uh, quite a bit of ammunition. They have a very nice assortment of weapons. They're a 15-man squad, shock level trained. You can get three cards in your deck. And per card, you can get 17 if you wanted to. So, if you're not even mo using motorized, then... I already have, if I take for example this one, I already have a lot of infantry. And that is shock level. That is something that Finland does very, very well. Now, the firepower of the Kart and Jakari is boosted by their transports. We have the XA-185 Musti, and what I basically christened as the XA-185 Kraken. One comes with the AGS-17, and the other comes with the Musti, which is a 95mm heat rocket wielding transport. What I've found to be more effective is the Kraken, so the KRKK. Grenade launchers are just that much more effective at suppressing enemy infantry. As for the Kart and Jackety themselves, I would like to bring multiple squads, but I only have so many availability slots in my deck, so many activation points, and we're going to run into that problem of not uh, having a shortage of activation points, but having a shortage of infantry slots. I would like that to be bigger, especially for Finland. As for the Kart and Jackery, I'm going to call them in in the Kraken, and we're going to just bring 17 of those. With which, they may make the Jackery 90 obsolete. So, the Jackery might be removed later on. Next up is the Nostavaki. This is a militia support squad. Interestingly, they carry the Mosin rifle, the M39, really, really outdated, but that's not where you get them. You get them for the Lati. This is classed as a sniper rifle. I believe it's an anti-tank rifle, doing a range of 1225, 40% accuracy. They fire 19 rounds a minute, so you can keep these guys going for quite a while, considering that they carry 100 rounds. And they have 2 AP, 1 HE. At short range, that AP can really crank up. And this means that at short range they can quickly trake out transports. Here's the problem. They're militia trained. And with that they are quick to panic. So I don't think that these are going to be fantastically useful. I mean, as fire support squads, maybe 
if you can make sure that something else or someone else is taking the fire off of them. Next, Panzer Jackery. Sorry, Panzeri Jackery. These guys are your um, your armored troops, your armored infantry. Basically, your Panzer Jaegers. Interesting about these is that they use the Raika, and the Raika is a much improved um, law, or at least it has many advantages over the law. You have the same range, but your accuracy is 10% better. They have a little bit of AP extra, and their suppression is way higher, so the chance that you're going to stun an enemy unit is better. And with that, the more stunned an enemy unit is, of course, the more likely that they are going to lose accuracy and lose effectiveness against you. As for the other weapons, they are only different in so far that while they carry the same weaponry, they have different stats. So you don't have to expect any um, exotic weapons on them. They all use the RK-62. But the Panzer Jäckeri know how to use them, at least a little bit better than the Jäckeri, as they have 30% versus 45. And take note that the KK-62 is, again, the same weapon. But the uh, Panzer Jäckeri can use those on the move. They have a stabilizer. And they can use them in CQC. So you can use these guys as door kickers and take out enemy infantry. The Panzer Jäckeri also come in the 90s version which is when they get a far better anti-tank weapon. You got the Raika or you got the Apalas. Now the Apalas is the same level of accuracy but way better armor piercing power of 23 versus 18. You also fire these things twice as fast and with that increased amount of AP I will definitely have these in my deck because currently I don't have any anti-tank options yet. Or at least not any good ones, because these so far only carry the M72A4. As for their transport and availability, they are shock level trained. They can get the XA180KT or 185KT. Other options that you have as far as transport goes is the BMP1 or the BMP2. Now, seeing that the XA185 is uh, slightly are actually far worse in armor as compared to the BMP2. I mean, you're looking at 4, 3, 1, and 1 on the BMP2 versus 1 all around for the XA185. The gun makes all the difference. The gun is where it's at. And the gun on the BMP2 is not bad for an IFV, but the, I, um, the Bushmaster 2 is just so much better. It has 4 AP. Its rate of fire may be slightly less, but you can just go through units so much faster with that thing. So I will definitely recommend this thing over the BMP2 any day. So we're going to have 14 of these. Then you're coming up to the anti-tank department where you find the PST OHJ 82M or the 94. Now they're not too different from each other. The one uses the spike which has 2450 versus 2625, so this is where the Concourse wins out. Accuracy is where the Spike wins out, and the Spike also wins with AP, just slightly one point of difference. But the Spike is faster. It's a faster weapon, and it will hit the target sooner than uh, the Concourse will. So if you're looking for AT, I would recommend the 94, because it simply has more firepower. If you're looking at why this is 82 and this is 94, um, it refers to the year. 1994 and 1982. So I'm going to bring one card of these 94s. And to make sure that they're not going to get too expensive, I don't want to have the XA185KT for them. And the only, and this is something that I don't quite like, the only real cheap transport that you get is the BTR-50. Now the BTR-50 is not fantastic by any stretch but 45 kph off-road is pretty bad and especially if you take the autonomy into account with that as well at 350 you may on larger maps have to at some point resupply them so I will be taking the XA 180 because they don't have that problem seven of these and we're not quite done with the Finnish infantry yet this is the Raniko Jakari the Raniko Jakari come again in two different variants. 
They have, um, correction, I'm comparing the wrong ones. Uh, my apologies. We got the Raniko Jakari base and the 90s. Once again, these are armed with either the Raika or the Apalas. So once again, you have a significant anti-tank weapon. As far as their other weapons go, they have a really accurate machine gun, or um, as they call it, an assault rifle. The support weapon that they use, I think that this one, well, it's virtually the same weapon. Yeah, the only difference that you're seeing here is an eight rounds a minute rate of fire difference. Everything else is exactly the same. So what you're paying five points for is the Apalas versus the Raika, and I would definitely recommend the 90s version because the Apalas is just so much better. Also, that means that if you're going to be pushing with these guys through a town and you suddenly run up to a tank or a heavier transport, they can very, very quickly deal with that. Whereas the uh, base version may have a little bit more difficulty with that. I'm going to bring these in in the XA180s to make sure that I don't spend an XA uh, or 185KT card on them. And then we have these guys, and this is another fire support squad. I'm going to lay these side by side with the Nostovaki. If you're looking at the Raskas Sinkorima, then you have a different sort of fire support squad. These guys rely on a small caliber weapon, 20 millimeter. These guys rely on a 95mm heat rocket. I haven't really been able to work out yet which is better. The range on these is fantastic at 1400. And they have the exact same, sorry, the exact same stats as the tank Shishu that the Chinese use. That makes them a really effective anti-transport weapon. They can also deal HE damage against infantry. Uh, so can they, but it's less. But these do their damage a bit faster at 19 versus 7. The one significant difference that I further find is that these are militia, so quick to panic. And these are regular, which means that they're not that likely to panic instantly. Without making them a bit more effective. But I unfortunately have no further slots. You're going to have to make some hard choices for Finland or go with a specialized deck. Otherwise, you're simply going to run out of options for your units. You simply don't have enough activation slots. And this is why I mentioned earlier that I would love to have more, but I simply can't. Moving on to supports. As for anti-air, we got the gun systems first. They get the SU-57-2, which also makes for an interesting fire support gun for your infantry when, for example, crawling through forests. The ITPSV Marksman, they get the Sergei and the Sergei Mod, which is an improved version of it. Now these things I find to be quite effective at, for example, stopping helo rushes from immediately wiping out your command vehicle for not that much of a price, only 30 points. For offensive operations, I would prefer the Marksman because it has armor and it has way better accuracy. And of course, yes, it is radar guided, so you have to babysit it a little bit. But that accuracy combined with a far more effective weapon, I think makes the marksman much more effective if you're actually pushing. Take note of the availability as you don't get that many, seven or five. I'm gonna take seven for this deck. Missile systems. We have the ITO-79 which is a weapon system that only uses two missiles. They are radar guided. Their accuracy, not really good. The ITO-96 is way better. This is the Book M1. Um, not that much to tell about this thing, basically, as it's the same weapon as we already know in-game. Four of these for me. And then I want to have the ITO-90. Now, the stats as compared to what you may have seen on the stream have changed. This thing used to be radar guided and is no longer radar guided. The radar tag there is gone. It is guided. That means that you need to be sitting still. And the icon here is still wrong. It says radar guided, but then again, it is a preview version. So let's cut them a break. Stats wise, the range against airplanes used to be three and a half kilometers and thereby extremely effective in both roles. 
that has been reduced to 2800, making this much more of an upgraded Crotal, which I think is going to be really effective against helicopters. Not so much against airplanes. I mean, they can do it, but I would prefer it if they spent their missiles on helicopters before the helicopter can hit my forces. Interestingly, you get two cards. I'd expected a unit like this to be prototyped, but it's not. You can get two cards, meaning ten of these units if you really wanted to. I'm just going to take one card of five. Then, coming up to the artillery section, we have several options. PSH-74, um, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Acacia. Teluk-91 is more interesting, but with a dispersion of little over six clicks, I find it not to be too accurate. Rocket artillery is where they have quite a few options. They got the ROC 76, they got the ROC 89, fires napalm, take note of that, and they got the ROC 91. This one has 11 HE and nice range, nice dispersion, a large area stun weapon, but don't expect it to kill anything in particular as it's going to be firing those 16 missiles over a pretty large area. If you want to actually hit something and kill it, you're much better off with any of these artillery systems that are more geared towards that. Unfortunately, the Taluk 84 in its current preview state does not have a very good dispersion. 6300 only. Mortars do have better dispersion. This is one that I'm going to be using. This is the Teluk 66, or the Teluk R866, but I think Teluk 66 makes more sense and is definitely easier on the tongue. Nice amount of range, nice amount of HE at 6. Armament is a bit low at 42, but it's workable. And then as for long range artillery, I'm not sure yet. Because with all the infantry, if I can stun a large area and use the Rock 91, that might be better than what I usually use, which is just another howitzer. So for me, I'm going to go for this one in this deck. Tanks. I always start with the super heavies. This is the T70 M, uh, sorry, the T72 M1 mod. As you're going to be seeing with these Finnish tank units, they have great accuracy, 70%. Now that's not unheard of on a super heavy. All round stats are good, 70 kph, medium optics as with most super heavies, 21 frontal armor, 23 AP on the gun, 4 HE on the gun as well, so you can also take out infantry pretty quickly, uh, 28 rounds is pretty standard, autonomy of 700 is really nice, it means that you don't have to keep carrying fuel after this unit. Their uh, lighter version of the T70 uh, M1 mod is the T72 M1 Paiv. Same gun, same vehicle, less armor. You're paying 45 points less, you get 7 points of armor less, but the gun is exactly the same. The platform, the whole mobility system is exactly the same. I would say that if it has a bit less armor, it might be able to go a bit further, but the autonomy is still 700 there. So if you're going to be sniping stuff, then the T-72 M1 Paiv is definitely a nice unit for that. You can get 7 or 5, um, I'm going to go with 5, to further boost that accuracy. Because with 23, they can really quickly damage stuff. T-72 M1, again, quite an accurate gun, 14 frontal armor, um, not that special in my opinion. T-55 M Mati is special. They keep their T-55s around for a long time, as this is a 1989 year tank. Look at the accuracy. This is one of the sniper units that you may have seen on the stream. 70% accuracy, 17 AP. Quite nice. Make sure that it doesn't take a hit, because at 7 frontal armor you're not that likely to survive. So, very good at dealing the first blow, and potentially getting a very solid hit in with the first blow but definitely not one to be used on open tank warfare. Then you have the T-55A, uh, standard Soviet tank, you see these basically everywhere in each deck, and they have the Charioteer, which is a British uh, medium tank, I believe. It depends a bit on your classification of tanks. I don't immediately see a role for this one, 
may be initially when you're pushing with a line of infantry so your motorized or mechanized column is rushing up this thing can keep up take out some transports although range is pretty well it's okay for 15 points I mean you don't expect wonders for units like that 30% accuracy 8 AP on the gun not really my type of unit Recky again some really really interesting units here I'm gonna have a stab at pronouncing this this is the Iri Koiskarayekiri this is the one that is um, in some regards the upgraded variant of the LSTR the thing is that the LSTRs have a decent amount of availability and you only get one card of these at five availability so five veteran cards or five veteran units or four elite they have a nice amount of assortment for transports you have the MI-8P, the Super Puma XA-180, BTR-60 PB and the ZIL-157 if you want to go on the cheap for a 35 point infantry unit that has these fantastic weapons I would not go cheap and uh, just scave off points on the transport I'm going to be using them in the Super Puma making sure that these guys take terrain early or that I can use them as a flanking force so definitely one of those cars then we have the quad bike um, I believe that this is called the Monkia. it's it's interesting in multiple regards of course it's really really quick 80 kph it is a um, what do they call it yeah they call it a recon do they have any other thing for it armored recon hang on did they actually make a new unit card for that yeah well no not really never mind I thought they had a new designation for it because it only set recon but never mind that it has very good stealth it's something that you very rarely see on units that are not uh, recon infantry 80 kph off-road means that yes there are some units that are faster very good optics um, autonomy is a bit low on the 300 and this thing will get one shotted by virtually anything at three strength and no armor I would use these as very cheap reconnaissance units park them potentially pretty aggressively towards the enemy line in a tree line and hold them safe there keep them as spotters they won't give their position away as they can't fire and with very good stealth capability mixed with very good maneuverability they are faster and potentially safer at getting in position than most recon squads will be so these could make for some really interesting recon tactics other interesting units um, they got the BMP 1KT this seems to be the love child between um, a Bushmaster and a BMP 1 in the sense that it's a reconnaissance unit that has medium optics correction good optics and medium stealth with a Bushmaster 2 here's the problem with that it doesn't have a lot of armor it is okay for spammability but if you want to use these as passive recons then you're gonna to have to turn the gun off and the gun is just so good on this tank or this recon vehicle that I would use these to escort a push not as um, frontline reconnaissance units in the sense that they're going to be observing a flank passively the gun is too good to keep it off so I'm gonna go with uh, 10 at hardened if I find that I lose them too quickly I'm probably playing wrong but if you want to feel a bit safer with the numbers you can go for 14 at trained recon helicopters this is always something that I recommend in a deck they have the Elouette 2 or the Jet Ranger Elouette 2 um, it's a new unit but it's absolutely crap it has four strength as most of the small recon helicopters do very good optics but very slow at 185 autonomy is okay but if you pay out 25 points more you get exceptional optics a helicopter that's a bit faster and that can do this job just a bit better availability seven or five well I'll take the five and here's another interesting reconnaissance unit this is the t55m peon SP uh, sorry peon PSV very very good gun as it's the same gun that we found on the other t55 one the t55 Matty 
Now, depending on how you structure your deck, you could argue that you don't need the T55 Matty, and instead go for the Peon PSV. And I think you could get away with that too, because you can get two cards of these, and if you compare them, you can see that the Recon version is slightly more heavily armored than the base version, at 10 versus 7. 4 versus 3 on the sides, so, uh, back size is the same, and top is one better. So this is definitely a tank that I want to have in my Reconnaissance tab. And this is actually, once again, an area where you run into trouble. There are more units that you may want to have. For example, reconnaissance units such as the Sissy, which is a shock-trained reconnaissance group with a sniper rifle. Um, I would love to get these in my deck, but I just cannot fit them. Vehicles. Um, they have some interesting units. This is the BTR-50 Vigilant. Not a weapon system I would use. Terrible missiles. 2100 meter range means that it is going to get outranged by tanks. Which is its intended target. So definitely a no-go. The uh, PST Psajon or Psajon. Ito missiles. Now we're talking. This thing can deliver a blow. The 60 point version is even better. At the toe 2. 70% accuracy, 25 points of AP. It's going to do a lot of damage. And if it has fired the missile and gotten a hit, it can also get the hell out of there at 100 kph off-road speed. This is my go this is going to be my ATGM of choice. And there it is. The Sturmi. I have used these things in a skirmish match. And they're interesting in the sense that um, they're only 5 points. You can get two cards, which means that if you absolutely wanted to spam them, then you can definitely do so, because you can field 48. The problem is their autonomy. At 155, they are barely able to make it to the front line. And with that, you're going to be constantly caring for these things by bringing logistics to them and making sure that they can keep moving. The weapon system itself is okay for taking out transports and maybe support units. Anything that has more than six armor and that can penetrate three points of armor is going to just laugh at you. Which means that if you look for example at some of the transports, I believe the BMP2 might be able to do it or the KT, there we go. Um, if you have something that has for example a Bushmaster cannon is going to look at your Sturmy, fire once or twice, and take it out. I tried them in my deck. Um, they're just too much work to field. They're just too much work. On a small map, maybe. If you want to get a headache, take them on Asgard and get them to the other side of the map. Because uh, you can field quite a few of them, but you're going to have to field the other half of your points to supply units to keep them going. Another unit that is quite interesting is the Terra Musti. This is the Musti weapon that we have already seen on two other units. One of which, notably, was a transport. Um, let me see, here it is. The Musti transport. This one has the same weapon, of course, and that weapon is once again fitted to this one. It's just a bit cheaper. It's 10 points. They are very, very spammable. Again, two cards, 24 or 19. And autonomy is good. Off-road speed is okay. Um, no armor whatsoever. It's just a truck with a recoilless rifle. But the accuracy on the rifle is pretty good. You can likely get one or two shots off. I'm going to keep these in as a bit of an all-rounder. And then you got the UAZ uh, Pistoche, which is another HGM. I don't really recommend it. Helos. Basically empty. They got the HH-10, which is an MD-500 Helo with a couple of TO-2 missiles on it. Really powerful. These things slice through tanks. And they are absolutely handy because of for the rest, I don't really have that many long-range options for dealing with tanks. My infantry has the spike, which is 21 and 2400. My tanks 
can survive some standoff conflict against the Super Heavy, say an M1A2, but not for too long. And the other tanks definitely cannot do it. My other option is this one for dealing with Super Heavies, and I have now the HH-10. Other helicopters that they have are the MI-8T KT, armed with two 23mm autocannons, as well as an assortment of rocket pods. Um, I'm not sure about these. They seem to be a bit of a poor man's gunship, which could make them really interesting, but they have no turret. And that means that, unlike, for example, an Apache or an Mi-24 that has a turret, it has to slow down, and it has to hover, turn the helo to face the threat that it wants to take out, and then fire. Whereas something with a turret just happens to fly over and can already engage the unit. So there is a massive drawback to this unit. That being said, once you are hovering, the accuracy is really good. 50% accuracy on an autocannon, and that times two, so your rate of fire is intense at 2500 rounds a minute. You do get a bit of AP, you get a bit of HE, and I think that they're going to be really effective against transports. Um, anything else, not so much. Infantry, they also have the rocket pods, two HE, decent accuracy, decent range. I'm not going to be fitting them in the deck just now. They also have another version of it, which is the MI-8T. Does not come equipped with the uh, larger rocket pods. These are 80 millimeters, these are 57. You're going to suffer in the HE, as well as the accuracy, and they don't have the 23 mils. So I'm only going to be keeping this one in the deck. Air power. Um, let's start it with the bad news first. Meet the Finnish anti-tank plane. This is all they get. This is it. An AS-11 CM-170. Terrible time over target, terrible ECM, very, very slow speed, and the missile, well, you're lucky if you're going to hit one. And if you do hit, then it's likely that the tank, the Super Heavy, is just going to laugh at you because it doesn't do any damage. Or, of course, it is heat, so it will always do one damage, but no. Just no. More interesting is the Avia 2B, also known as the B5 to the North Koreans. Now, something that I was thinking is a bit interesting is that over in the rear, they claim to have a rear gunner, but the rear gunner himself is missing in action. So he's not actually there, but hopefully the gun works. Um, although if you have to use the gun, then that means that you're in a lot of trouble as you're about to be shot down. Now as for the bomb, 24 HE still does a lot of damage against infantry and transports and will stun vehicles up to tanks. So yes, it is definitely a nice alternative. But once again, it will not kill tanks. This Finnish do not have a tank sniper airplane. And this is something that you are constantly going to have to keep in the back of your mind as you have to plan ahead. If you are expecting an enemy to use a Super Heavy, then that means that you have to already have some sort of heavy anti-tank solution in place, as you just cannot fly it in with a finish. Other airplanes that they have is the Hawk 51. It drops two 500 kilogram bombs, but after the Avia 2B, or the 28, um, it seems a bit underwhelming to drop a 15 HE bomb, whereas this thing drops 24. And sure enough, this one does not have any ECM, but it does have 15 strength. And that means that it can at least absorb one missile from the enemy AA before going down. Other units, the J-35S. Now they have quite a few versions of the J-35 in this deck. The S is an early version anti-airplane, which I, for one, don't find a use for. The Falcon that is armed, or the Falcon that it's armed with, is an air to air missile, 7,000 meter range, so that's okay, that's on par with everything else. Accuracy is bad, HE is bad, it's semi active. The launcher platform, speed is alright, although it won't be able to intercept any of the faster air security fighters. ECM, non existent. 
Fuel, okay. A time over target of 75 seconds can be reached. Turning radius is actually really good. But the missile is just crap. So, no. We have better options. J35F. Same platform, so the same Draken, except that this one drops six 500 kilogram napalm bombs. Um, napalm is very good, but for me it's a bit too specific, as it is really good at knocking out infantry or denying the enemy an area, but the Finnish um, have the Avia, which is already something that can quickly wipe out or suppress an area so that the rest of units can move in. J35FS is a ground attack aircraft. It comes with two fire and forget missiles against helicopters, but good luck with 25% accuracy, and 135 rockets or 135 millimeter rockets with 12 loads. You might be able to snipe anti air with it. That's one role that I could see for it. Moving on, the MiG 21 F 13, another rocket pod plane. It is, um, in most regards, better than the J-35. This one has a far larger caliber on the missiles or on the rockets, but the damage is only 3 versus 4, so it's not that stellar. The MiG is faster, has some ECM, um, range is the same, and the turn radius is not really important, as you line up this thing on the target and you drop off those rocket pods and you're out. And they also have the MiG-21 BIS, which is your air superior fighter. For 90 points, it is actually not that bad, as it has only fire and forget missiles, six of them. All of them are mid-range, and I'm not exactly sure why they decided to go for a mix between the Molnia and the Ames. I'd say that the Ames are overall... well, yeah, there is the accuracy thing. 40% versus 30, or 4 HE versus 3. So, in that regard, the Molnia are slightly more likely to hit. I would, although, not recommend this as a main ASF, because they are just, they just don't have the range. There's already going to be one, if not more, missiles coming for your aircraft before the, bit mine, sorry, before the MiG-21 can even get a shot off. So I would not see this thing in a role other than potentially countering a swarm of helicopters, if that. Now, in the preview version, there is still the MiG-29-913. And I'm saying in the preview version because I still don't see how this thing is going to be useful. It still has only two Vimple missiles. It has no short-range dogfighting missiles. One missile at 5 HE is going to damage any other aircraft, but not kill it. It is just not good enough. Now, if you want something dead, if you really want something to drop from the sky, you call in the F-18C. Two AIM-9Ms at 4200 meters are the short-range missiles, and it carries six long-range AIM rams, AIM-120As. Fire and forgets, everything on that bird, 50% ECM, exceptional air detection, 1000 kph, 150 seconds time over target. This thing is going to stay up there for a long time and threaten any aircraft that may come near it. Availability, 2 at rookie or 1 at elite. I'm going to go for elite. I think that this is going to be a very dangerous aircraft to shoot down. If you would prefer a more constant air patrol, you could go for two rookies and have them not go on the offensive, but just circle over your own lines. Because when something gets close, it can pop out a few AMRAMs, and if nothing shows up, you can call out one, uh, wait till it runs out of fuel, and then tell that one to go back and pop in the other one. I usually prefer them in an offensive role, which is why I'm going to go with Elite. Now, what else would I recommend here? Um... Maybe the J-35F. It's not very survivable. It doesn't have an ECM. I'm going to try that one. And as for the rocket pods... I don't know. I think that this is the lesser of all evils that you can see here. 
four of these. Now, that leaves me with a couple of activation points, and as mentioned, I would love to stuff those in infantry, because there are still more interesting units there. I would love to field some more reconnaissance, but again, infantry, or because, once again, units there are really good. Vehicles? Meh. Not really. I don't really like the Sturmy, I don't like the Vigilant. I already have the improved version of the ATGMs, so I don't need anything there. The helicopters, well, I could field this one. That leaves me with just two points. I'm going to well, invest those in tanks. I just don't know what else to go for. I'm going to go for the T-72M1 as a bit of an all-rounder. So line those up in my point values, and there we go. Now, there's a few problems with this deck. One, no tank sniper aircraft. I mean, yes, technically it has one, but operationally and effectively, no. It just doesn't have one. Airplane tab, no seed. It does not come with anything that can suppress radar. Helicopters, it does not come with a gunship that has a turret. It does not come with a gunship that has rocket pods, a main gun or a turret, and a missile which is a really versatile unit. Vehicles. There are no real fire support vehicles that you normally see. There's no napalm tank. There's no um, cheap fire support units. Then again, that is solved in the infantry tab. Recon. Um, I'd say that the recon problem is um, a first world luxury problem. You don't have enough slots as the units that are in here are just really, really good. Tanks. Potential problem is the lack of uh, tankiness. And I mean that in the sense that the armor on most tanks is a bit underwhelming. Support. Problem that they may have is that they don't have any really accurate artillery systems. At least not in the current build. Both the Talak 91 and the Talak 84 only have a dispersion of 6370, which is just not that good. But I think that the Talak 84, I don't know, I would nominate that one to get better dispersion, but I'm not sure yet. Infantry, um, luxury problem. There's too many good options, and that's why I very much recommend a motorized deck, if not with the coalition that you get with this unit. And if you do so, um, you get the Polish, which is a really, really useful ally. Logistics, uh, no complaints here. They're good. Now, I don't know the price yet, but if you like motorized decks, then I would definitely recommend Finland. They have really, really good infantry, but you're going to have to make sure that you find a map that's suitable as a very open map. Um, a hop and glory comes to mind, it could be a significant problem. You're going to have to try and get those transports across. And you're going to have to try and ferry your infantry into safe positions quick. Because once the enemy takes the field, and once they start fielding tanks, especially super heavies, you're going to be in a world of hurt trying to remove those. So yes, they have some really good units, and they have some pretty sizable flaws in this deck, or some pretty sizable weak spots. Now, this is the preview build, so everything can still change, but it's not that likely to. But let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'll have enough, another video up for a uh, finished deck with the motorized soon, but probably after the release. And for the Yugoslavian units, I'll make sure I have a video of a preview deck for that one up as well. As for gameplay, still working on that, but I hope to be able to get you some before the decks get released on Thursday. Thank you for watching. Hope you had fun. And I'll see you soon for more Wargame.